Item number, SCP-023. Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures SCP-023 is to be contained in a walled-off intersection of two corridors at site with at least three meters of space in each direction, and false doors at three of the four ends, in addition to the real door. Security cameras will be placed and maintained above all four doors. At all times, SCP-023's eye sockets are to be filled with spherical inserts made of hard rubber. Eye inserts must be replaced as they degrade. Degradation can be monitored by measuring the brightness of the burning effect, as observed by security footage. Brightness greater than 12 candela requires that the inserts be replaced within 12 hours. Eye inserts are only to be replaced individually, and only after the sun is completely set. Personnel are not to look directly into eye sockets of SCP-023 at any time. Following Incident 023-27, all reflective surfaces, including displays, monitors, and eyewear of any sort, are not permitted within 30 meters of SCP-023's cell. This includes monitors linked to security cameras within its enclosure. Security personnel posted at checkpoints outside both corridors will enforce and adhere to this measure. Experimentation involving SCP-023 has been suspended indefinitely. Description SCP-023 is a large, sexless, shaggy canine, 1.5 meters at the shoulder, with black fur. The following text has been struck through. It has bright orange-red eyes and prominent teeth, and of strike through. Anytime an individual makes eye contact with SCP-023, either that person or a member of their immediate family will die exactly one year after eye contact is broken. Research into the method of selection is incomplete due to a moratorium on experiments, but the available data suggests that having a larger immediate family lessens the chance of the individual making eye contact themselves dying, and neither a pattern nor a preference in victim types have been found. This may indicate that SCP-023's victim is designated entirely at random, but it is unknown whether this selection occurs at the beginning or at the end of the one-year time period. Attempts to terminate an individual who has made eye contact with SCP-023 and their entire immediate family before the one-year time period has ended. Data expunged. Autopsies of individuals killed by SCP-023's effect show that, while outwardly appearing unharmed, their remains have been filled in with highly compacted ash, including but not limited to all organ systems and the circulatory system. Muscle tissue, bones, and brain tissue universally show signs of exposure to temperatures above degrees Celsius. If not contained in a setting that at least superficially resembles a crossroads, SCP-023 will phase through walls to get to the nearest suitable location, incinerating all materials it passes through. SCP-023 was first brought to the Foundation's attention when it attacked a church in while it was in session, killing civilians directly and as a result of eye contact. Following retrieval of SCP-023, Class B amnestics were administered to all witnesses and surviving victims. The incident was covered up as a case of arson. Incident Report 023-026 SCP involved SCP-023 Personnel involved Dr. 5D class personnel Date Location Site Description in an attempt to curtail the danger posed by SCP-023, Dr. has approved the removal of both 023's eyes and teeth. Immediately after both its eyes were removed, SCP-023 breached security by vanishing completely. SCP-023 was reobtained on a stretch of interstate at 4.37 p.m. and brought back into containment, where D-Class personnel finished pulling out its teeth. While the total number of civilians exposed to SCP-023 during this period is unknown, death record monitoring has tied nine civilian deaths to this incident. Time stands confirmed over the course of the next 48 hours that SCP-023 vanished only while the sun was visible in the sky from outside site. Addendum 023-026-1 As of Dr. has been suspended pending disciplinary review for contributing to, if not being directly responsible for, Incident 023-026. Dr. 
is now in charge of SCP-023. The increased difficulties in containment that have been incurred as a result of Dr. should serve to remind all personnel of the Foundation's purpose. Secure, contain, and protect. Research, experimentation, convenience, and even the safety of Foundation personnel are secondary concerns. We are not working to protect ourselves. 05 Addendum 023-026-2 A total of bodies, with a time of death exactly one year after Incident 023-26, have been identified as consistent with SCP-023 exposure. Incident Report 023-27 SCP Involved SCP-023 Personnel Involved Dr. Data Expunged Date Location Site Description Timeline of Events 10 seconds. A pair of glass eyeballs are inserted into the eye sockets of SCP-023 by 2 D-Class personnel. 15 seconds. Glass eyes take on an orange-red glow, similar to what SCP-023's real eyes looked like before removal. 3 minutes and 13 seconds. Molten glass begins to run out of SCP-023's eye sockets. 5 minutes and 54 seconds. Data expunged appear on all lenses, windows, mirrors, monitors, and glass surfaces at site 6 minutes and 12 seconds. Evacuation of site ordered. 6 hours, 54 minutes and 7 seconds. Sun visible over horizon. D-class personnel sent in to check area around SCP-023's enclosure. Data expunged gone. Only trace of SCP-023 is a burnt section of floor around a puddle of colored glass. Personal log of Dr. Date It's my fault. I have doomed my research team, and possibly the rest of the facility. All that's left is to keep trying. We must contain SCP-023. Note, on One year after Incident 023-27, personnel were interred in an unmarked mass grave outside site addendum 023-001 scp-023 broke containment on by passing through its cell wall incident 023-01 scp-023 was later discovered at the intersection of two corridors elsewhere on site agent noted scp-023's similarity to a Special Containment Procedure for SCP-023 Updated Assistant Researcher Issued a reprimand for negligence Addendum 023-002 SCP-023 has been responsible for the deaths of personnel and civilians since it was first brought into containment on 10-12-94 Addendum 023-003 Request for reclassification to Keter pending. Addendum 023-004 Due to both anomalies focusing on specific geographic spaces, their destructive capabilities, and canine appearance, it is possible that SCP-1111-1 may be a variant of the same phenomenon observed in SCP-023, or vice versa. Investigation into the origin of both anomalies is ongoing. Due to the inability to capture SCP-1111-1 for study, investigations are currently focused on SCP-023. Item Number SCP-072 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures All known instances of SCP-072 are to be contained in a 3.5 meter by 4 meter holding cell. Access is allowed only during authorized testing procedures without prior approval from Senior Researcher Grant. No materials created for the purpose of being slept on are to be introduced into a 15-meter vicinity of the holding cell. Description Instances of SCP-072 were first discovered in an apartment building in Michigan after two local media reports on SCP-072's effects caused a local panic, which drew the attention of Embedded Foundation agent SCP-072 is a shadowy and translucent projection which resembles a 0.9 meter long hand. 
the fingers of which taper to a sharp point. Detailed recording of SCP-072 is difficult, as it does not manifest at light levels above 5 lux. Instances of SCP-072 have only been observed to manifest when a human, hereafter referred to as the subject, enters REM sleep, while located in a bed infected by SCP-072, and leaves a foot or feet exposed to open air. If these conditions are satisfied, SCP-072 will emerge from the foot of the bed and appear to use its pointer finger to tap on the subject's foot until they awaken. Subjects have reported that at this point they were unable to move, showing symptoms similar to sleep paralysis. This continues as long as SCP-072 is visible. SCP-072 will then use its pointed fingers to cut portions of flesh from the exposed parts of the subject's foot or feet. It will return to within the bed in between each removal, emerging without the collected material. This will continue until SCP-072 has taken all of the exposed foot or feet, stopping at the ankle. Though subjects exposed to SCP-072 report this process to be immensely painful, its paralytic effects render them unable to scream or call for help. It is unknown if manifestations of SCP-072 feed on the collected material or use them for some other purpose. As long as the wounds are properly treated, SCP-072's effects are not fatal, but have been observed to cause psychological damage relating to sleep in the future. There is also a secondary effect. Any bed with an approximately 10 meter vicinity of a bed which manifests the effects of SCP-072 will also host an instance of SCP-072. Destruction of a bed affected by SCP-072 reveals no anomalous materials and no trace of biological material removed from subjects. Addendum List of known SCP-072 objects SCP-072-1, 2, and 3 Recovered from original apartment complex Three twin-sized beds, which were located within 10 meters of one another SCP-072-4 A king-sized four-poster bed Contaminated during SCP-072's time in site its temporary anomalous objects holding. SCP-072-5, a sleeping bag with bottom removed, introduced to SCP-072-1 for testing. When D-2191 entered REM sleep in object, data expunged, SCP-072-5 not recommended for testing in future. SCP-072-6 and-7, Beds introduced to SCP-072-2 and later destroyed for examination. Remains of SCP-072-6 and-7 appear unaffected, but are to be contained until further studies may be completed. Item Number SCP-080 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-080 is to be contained in a 4 meter by 4 meter room with a smaller antechamber located on the south wall to provide researchers with access. On the north wall, an observation room is to be connected, overlooking the main room through a window with thick blackout curtains that release only when the door to the observation room is closed. No attempts should be made to remove SCP-080 from this enclosure at any time. No more than one 7-watt incandescent light bulb is to be illuminated in the main room at any time. Absolutely no devices capable of producing light should be brought into the room. Under no circumstances should anything be brought into SCP-080's containment room that has the ability to shroud, conceal, or otherwise hide SCP-080. Failure to adhere to this will result in disciplinary action. Description: It is unknown if SCP-080 has a physical mass or body, as all attempts to interact with it physically have failed and have met with adverse effects. Researchers and personnel have described seeing SCP-080 as various shadows and humanoid effigies, with the only common attribute being two smoking eyes. It has come to the attention of researchers that SCP-080 induces uncontrollable drowsiness upon anyone entering its chamber. After approximately 30 minutes, any person observing it will be forced into REM sleep and may suffer irreversible psychological damage. This effect occurs even if SCP-080 is being observed from a separate room. If at any time SCP-080 finds a way to hide itself, such as in a cupboard, under a bed, 
covered in a sheet, etc. It will disappear entirely. Additionally, if any light enters SCP-080's containment room with a greater luminance than that produced by a standard children's nightlight, SCP-080 will instantly vanish. Both of these events are considered a containment breach, and any personnel responsible for this will be severely reprimanded, and possibly reassigned. Experiment 080-2-A Date 2000 Subject D-081 Male 19 years old Details Subject entered room containing SCP-080 at 1426 Begin log Doctor D-081 Do you see anything? D-081 No It's pitch black in here Subject is silent for several minutes D-081 Did you just let something in here? It feels like something's watching me. Doctor. No, D-081. We did not let anything into the room. D-081. What the f*** is that? D-081 is seen tripping and falling to the floor. Doctor. What do you see? D-081. This giant blackness. Like someone just standing in the corner. Oh god, it's looking right at me. Let me out. D-081 proceeds to pound on the door leading into the antechamber. Doctor. It's looking at you. Please describe its physical appearance. D-081 I don't know. Oh god, let me out. I don't want to be in here. D-081 starts whimpering. Doctor. Tell me what it looks like, D-081. Then we can let you out. D-081 It... It looks like a figure, hunched in the corner. Doctor. Is it a human? D-081 It's too big to be human. D-081 yawns. It's still looking at me, Doc. Still staring. Doctor. Move closer to it. D-081 proceeds to move to the corner of the room, obviously experiencing difficulty staying on his feet. D-081. Its eyes look like vapor, just staring at me, like it wants me to do something. D-081 falls to the floor again. Doctor. D-081, can you hear me? Subject is unresponsive for the next five minutes. End log. Subject presumably collapsed. Subsequently, no remains of D-081 were found, and it is assumed SCP-080 consumed D-081. Experiment 080-2-B Date 2000 Subject D-082 Female 30 years old Procedure Subject was sent into room with SCP-080, with intent to physically interact with SCP-080. Details. Subject entered room containing SCP-080 at 1735, under instruction of Dr. Begin log. Doctor. Tell me what you see. D-082. I don't see jack shit. Why is it so dark in here? After several minutes. Holy shit, what is that? It's just standing in the middle of the room. Doctor. Describe what you see. D-082. It's just standing in the middle of the room. I can make out two eyes, I guess. Doctor. Could you please approach it and let us know if anything changes? D-082. I feel drowsy. Did you slip me something or what? Doctor. Reach out and touch it. Tell me what you feel. D-082. You want me to touch that thing? Doctor. Yes. Please proceed. After a few minutes of argument, it is presumed that D-082 proceeds to touch SCP-080. At this time, the subject becomes unresponsive. End log. Subject was found asleep in the corner of SCP-080's containment room. Subject appeared to suffer no physical harm during experiment. Subject was interviewed after medical staff deemed D-082 to be in good physical health. Experiment 080-3-C Date 2000 Subject D-083 Male 24 years old Procedure Subject was sent into room with SCP-080, having been given a powerful amphetamine. Upon entering the room, Subject was advised to tell researchers what he saw. Subject describes a shadow-like figure in the center of the room. Subject was informed to stand still and inform researchers of any changes. Ten minutes into the experiment, Subject began yawning and became noticeably frightened. Subject became uncooperative and attempted to escape the containment room. Upon failing to escape, Subject announced an intent to harm SCP-080 
and presumably attempted to attack it. Upon doing so, subject immediately collapsed. D-083's body was recovered from SCP-080's containment room soon afterwards, having apparently suffered a major heart attack. Upon collecting D-083's body, researchers described an intense feeling of unease, a feeling of being watched, as well as a more acute awareness of SCP-080's presence in the room. Interview Log 080-1 Interviewed D-082 Interviewer Dr. Forward D-082 was interviewed following an inconclusive experiment involving SCP-080, where the subject was secured in the room with SCP-080 for 37 minutes. Begin Log Doctor, please describe what you remember from the experiment. D-082 Dr. later notes that D-082 had a spaced out expression and tone of voice. You told me to walk over to it and touch it. I didn't want to. I didn't. Doctor, what happened when you touched it? D-082, when I touched it? Have you seen that thing? Touch it. I couldn't move. It was staring at me, and I just couldn't move. Doctor, you didn't respond for several minutes. What were you doing? D-082, becoming increasingly agitated. It just stared at me. I couldn't move. I couldn't breathe. D-082 starts to hyperventilate. Doctor. Calm down, D-082. Take a deep breath. Do you remember falling asleep? D-082. It just stared and stared, not moving, but I felt something. I was on the floor and they were all over me. They're here. D-082 begins to scream and abruptly gets to their feet. No, they're trying to take me away. Back to that thing. I won't go back. You can't make me go back in there. D-082 lunges at Dr. Is subsequently terminated. End log. Addendum 080A. On 2000, Dr. and his immediate staff have begun complaining of increasingly stressful dreams. As he has had the most interaction with SCP-080 thus far, it has been theorized that SCP-080 is somehow capable of some type of mimetic effect on nearby personnel, even if not being directly observed. Addendum 080B. Following Dr. R's recent suicide, all personnel located in SCP-080's sector are to keep dream journals and are to inform site psychologists if dreams become increasingly violent or nightmarish in nature. Addendum 080-C All staff are reminded that the blackout curtains in the observation room will not release if the door is not closed and that exposure time should not exceed 30 minutes for any reason. Addendum 080-D it has come to the attention of senior research staff that some researchers are unable to see SCP-080 and may be entirely immune to its effects. Any personnel that thinks they are incapable of perceiving SCP-080, please report for mandatory testing. Addendum 080-E It has been suggested following Incident 081 that a Class D personnel be fed to SCP-080 once per month in order to neutralize SCP-080's effect on the mental health of on-site personnel. 05 approved. Incident 081. On a planned observation was conducted by two senior researchers. The researchers entered the observation room and the blackout curtains were released. Believing the room to be safely shielded from SCP-080's effects as it had in the past, the researchers began observing SCP-080. Approximately 40 minutes after observation began, both researchers suddenly fell asleep. Upon their retrieval, data expunged. It should be noted that following this incident, all on-site personnel that had reported suffering nightmares and feelings of unease had a good night's sleep and were generally in a more pleasant mood the following day. Note: All personnel are requested to stop referring to SCP-080 as the Boogeyman. Dr. Item number SCP-102 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-102 is currently in the possession of Marshall, Carter, and Dark LTD. Because ownership appears to be a binding, deed-based legalistic agreement independent of eminent domain, SCP-102 cannot be transferred to Foundation control in the foreseeable future. Description SCP-102 is a pair of standalone condominium-style beach houses located at 
currently owned by Marshall, Carter, and Dark LTD through the use of a dummy corporation known as Geyser Housing Associates, and rented to MC&D members as a vacation home for those with discerning taste in the eclectic adventures of privileged life. The two share similar properties, although data expunged. SCP-102-1 is the house on the left, number When a person whose name is not on the lease for SCP-102-1 enters the building, its interior appears as that of a crumbling empty house, with the prone body of the current leaseholder just inside the doorway if the house is occupied. Forensics tests on materials recovered from within the house show it to have been abandoned since the mid to late 70s. All photographs taken within SCP-102-1 corroborate this, regardless of the lease status of the photographer. However, when the leaseholder of the house enters via the front door, they find themselves in a fairly normal and well-kept condominium, decorated with a nautical theme. Often, they report a sensation of dizziness upon entering, which fades within a few seconds. When the leaseholder of SCP-102-1 exits the building, they become what is to all intents and purposes an incorporeal spiritual manifestation, capable of willful invisibility and moving through solid objects unimpeded. They enter and remain in this state each time they leave the house for the duration of the lease. At the conclusion of their lease, or at any time they willfully break the terms of said lease, they fall briefly unconscious and awaken on the floor at the front entrance of SCP-102-1, which appears to them as it does to any non-leaseholder. No bodies have been observed being removed from the house prematurely. SCP-102-2 is the house on the right, number At first glance, the effect of SCP-102-2 is identical to SCP-102-1. However, data expunged advanced decay, followed by data expunged. Leaseholders of SCP-102-2 who do not exit the building promptly at the cessation of their contract are to be declared missing, presumed dead, 30 days following the end of their lease. Leaseholders who do exit the building are to be administered a regimen of steroid-based enhancers to counter the data expunged deterred constantly for signs of psychological aberration. Addendum All information in this report is unverified, though details are consistent from multiple sources. The content of this report was taken from interviews with D-Class personnel numbers 107869, Death Sentence, Rape, Murder, 103354, Life Without Parole, Aggravated Sexual Assault on a Minor, and 3370633, Death Sentence, all of whom were frequent tenants of SCP-102-1 prior to incarceration. It is theorized that D-1033654 made use of SCP-102-1's effect to commit data expunged. Item Number SCP-126 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-126 is kept within a standard Euclid-class humanoid containment cell, despite not having needs consistent with that of a normal human, or any kind of nourishment as this environment has proven the most effective in keeping SCP-126 contained. In case of a containment breach, acoustic sensors embedded within SCP-126's containment cell, as well as the entire wing in which SCP-126's cell is housed, can be used to locate SCP-126. Firm but polite verbal requests for SCP-126 to return to its cell are to be given until it complies. Personnel interacting with SCP-126 must undergo regular psychiatric screening, and personnel exhibiting emotional attachment to SCP-126 must be administered a Class B amnestic and reassigned. Description: SCP-126 is an invisible and intangible entity that can only be identified via sound. SCP-126 is sentient, with the ability to speak in multiple languages in a female voice and engage in conversation with any subject within range. To date, no method by which SCP-126 can be visually detected has been devised, as SCP-126 does not appear to emit any kind of light, radiation, heat, or electromagnetic energy. SCP-126 does appear to occupy an area, as evidenced by the ability to triangulate its suggested location via its voice. SCP-126 also emits sound when moving consistent with footsteps made by a human subject wearing high heels with a mass of approximately 55 to 60 kilograms, though no depressions can be seen in any floor materials, and pressure sensors do not register any kind of presence. 
SCP-126 cannot pass through barriers that would prevent a normal human from passing, such as a closed door, but solid objects can be pushed through the space it occupies without any effect. For unknown reasons, SCP-126 will comply with any request for it to follow a specific human subject or move to a specific location without question, though it may move away afterwards, or if it is not able to physically comply with the request. SCP-126 will engage in conversation with any personnel within its containment cell, preferring topics such as art, nature, and philosophy. SCP-126 exhibits knowledge of current topics and intelligence consistent with that of a college graduate, as well as moderate attention deficit disorder. SCP-126 will regularly change language without reason and stray off topic while conversing without warning. Attempts to question SCP-126 about its origin or nature have been unsuccessful, as SCP-126 becomes confused when presented with such questions and will quickly stray away from the topic. Despite not appearing to use or need any furniture or appliances, SCP-126 will request such items as a bed, dresser, mirror, and other sundries if not present, and is more likely to stay within a room if such items are available. A small number of personnel exhibit anomalous behavior after engaging in conversation with SCP-126, including but not limited to believing that they have known SCP-126 for many years, and that SCP-126 is a close friend or loved one. If not treated, these subjects will begin to ignore basic needs in order to continue conversing with SCP-126 eventually dying from dehydration or starvation. SCP-126 was discovered in a suburban home in after several reports of the house being haunted. A Foundation containment team was able to quickly locate SCP-126 and, after conversing for several minutes, convinced SCP-126 to enter a mobile containment unit, which was used to transfer it to a local Foundation containment site. Addendum 126-1 Researcher Note to date, conversations with SCP-126 have yielded several notable personality traits. SCP-126 is mildly arachnophobic and will move away from any specimens introduced to its containment cell. SCP-126 exhibits a desire to assist with any task which it believes it can be of help, despite being unable to manipulate objects. SCP-126 prefers to converse with male subjects that exhibit humor and intelligence. SCP-126 expresses a desire to have children and has conversed with staff on several occasions regarding child care methodology. SCP-126 has the ability to fluently speak English, French, German, Portuguese, Spanish, and at least three other unknown languages. Dr. Senior Researcher Item Number SCP-154 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-154 is to be kept within Weapon Locker 8 in Armed Research Site 47. Personnel wishing to research or use item must submit the required request forms. Anyone attempting to remove the item without clearance or from outside the facility is to be terminated on site. Description: SCP-154 is a pair of simple bronze bracelets, completely circular and large enough to comfortably hang off the arm of most people. Spectrograph analysis has proven that the item is composed entirely of copper, 85%, tin, 11%, arsenic, 3%, and traces of other slight impurities, less than 1%. When both bracelets are worn on the same arm, and the wearer concentrates on them with arms extended in a depiction of a traditional knocked bowstring pose, achieved by having the arm with the bracelets completely extended in front of oneself, with the opposing arm extended up to the elbow of the fully extended arm. A large, indistinct, incorporeal bow will form in the extended hand, and both bracelets will glow slightly. From that point onwards, SCP-154 can be treated as a bow, until the pose or concentration is broken, which results in the bracelets reverting to normal. There is no actual bowstring, but completing the motion of pulling it achieves the same effect. When the bowstring is pulled and released, the bones of the arm will be forcibly ejected from the extended limb, traveling in a straight path at speeds recorded over 300 meters per second. The missing bones and resulting damage to the arm are quickly regenerated, and the weapon is capable of being fired again within minutes. 
Tests using subjects possessing multiple arms and hands, such as SCP-1884-B, have demonstrated the ability to fire SCP-154 several times, with the bones of different arms being used with each successive firing. The regeneration implemented by the item is limited, only affecting the damage inflicted by the weapon itself. This regeneration seems to be an automatic action, and will continue in almost all situations. Both firing the weapon and the resulting regeneration are understandably painful, and participants which have used the item once are generally disinclined to repeat usage. However, there have been found to be some occasional abnormalities regarding the regeneration. Most often this manifests simply as minor mutations of the original subject, such as changes in size, pigmentation, and structure of the original organelles. These are an uncommon occurrence capable of happening during any use of the weapon, though generally tend to occur during repeat usage. There are more drastic abnormalities, though these are much rarer, and coincide with highly frequent use. These mutations can range from anything such as the growth of extra joints and digits in the affected arm, to a complete change of the chemical or physical structure of the limb. One test subject unknowingly had the bone matter within his arm converted into an unstable explosive compound only discovering the fact when it detonated, causing two fatalities and three casualties. Another had the entire bone and musculature structure morphed into fully functional serpentine physiology. Item Number SCP-178 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-178 is to be stored in a Class III anomalous object container guarded by no fewer than two armed personnel with level 3 clearance when not undergoing testing. Item is to be removed from containment only with the written permission of personnel with level 4 clearance or higher. Following Incident Number 178-14 Alpha, all tests are to be monitored remotely, in the presence of all personnel apart from test subjects in the testing area during experimentation is expressly prohibited. Description. SCP-178 is a pair of white stereoscopic 3D glasses with a rectangular white cardboard frame and lenses of transparent blue and red, left and right lenses respectively. Plastic. The item exhibits no unusual physical properties, apart from a slight discoloration of the cardboard consistent with age. When worn, the wearer begins perceiving large bipedal entities in addition to its ordinary surroundings. Entities reportedly exhibit a docile and occasionally curious behavior. Reports include entities leaning over the shoulder of persons working and observing them with interest. With one exception. Any attempt by the wearer or any other personnel to directly interact with the entities results in severe lacerations suddenly appearing on persons involved. The appearance of lacerations is rapid and continues until the moment the wearer expires. The pattern of lacerations is always consistent, with being slashed with three parallel tapered sharp objects of lengths varying between 14.2 and 27.4 centimeters, and maximum thickness varying between 2.9 and 8.1 centimeters. Recording and measuring devices used during testing failed to detect any anomalies, including while lacerations were appearing on subjects. Subjects do not report hearing any sounds emanating from the entities. Long-term observation of subjects exposed to the item reveals no lasting effects. Stereoscopic images viewed through the item appear three-dimensional. Addendum Number 1 Item was recovered in 19 in Tennessee by agent operating as a deep cover agent in the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service who arrived in the town following reports of a year old child being found dead in her second floor bedroom, apparently as a result of an unusual mauling. The agent noticed a blood-stained stereoscopic image of a ferris wheel adjacent to where the child was discovered, and after some searching, found the item under the child's bed, where it had apparently been thrown during the child's death throes. Said agent then proceeded to call a recovery team to his location. Following the recovery team's arrival, said agent wore the item and looked at the image, reporting nothing unusual until he turned his head to his left, whereupon he noticed an entity approximately an inch from his face, leaning over his shoulder 
and looking at the stereoscopic image. In the debriefing, Agent reported also noticing several other entities in the room, observing him and the recovery team. The agent refrained from attempting to interact with the entities, and the item was recovered without incident. Addendum number two. All experiments are logged in file number 178E. Experiment 178E1. Name. Doctors. Date. Undisclosed. Procedure. D-class subject is to be placed in secured test chamber containing SCP-178. The test chamber is to be observed via bulletproof glass window to adjacent control room and via audio and video recording devices. D-class subject will be instructed to wear SCP-178 and report what it observes until told otherwise. Results. Subject D-17831. Male, 41, no discernible mental abnormalities, is placed in the chamber and told to wear SCP-178. Subject is not told of SCP-178's nature. Subject does as instructed, then immediately expresses distress by throwing SCP-178 away and covering its eyes while vocalizing fear. Research staff instructs subject to describe the source of its distress. Subject unresponsive. Research staff attempts to calm subject. Subject responds by uncovering its face and looking around, appearing to still be distressed. Research staff instructs the subject once again to describe the source of its distress. Subject responds by stating the presence of an unfamiliar entity in close proximity to its face the moment it wore SCP-178. Research staff instructs subject to describe the entity in detail. Subject responds by stating entity was hideous and had too many eyes. Research staff instructs subject to describe the entity in greater detail. Subject states it did not manage to perceive many details before removing SCP-178. Research staff instructs subject to wear SCP-178. Subject uncooperative. Research staff repeats instruction. Subject uncooperative. Research staff threatens subject with termination unless it cooperates. Subject uncooperative. Testing is ended, and subject placed under surveillance to test for long-lasting symptoms of exposure. Subject displays symptoms of mild paranoia for two days, before returning to normal behavioral patterns. Surveillance ended after 30 days, and subject terminated. Note. Well, this wasn't very informative but at least it confirms we have an actual anomalous object in our hands. Experiment 178E2 Name Doctors Date Undisclosed Procedure D-class subject is to be placed in secured test chamber containing SCP-178. The test chamber is to be observed via bulletproof glass window to adjacent control room and via audio and video recording devices. D-class subject will be instructed to wear SCP-178 and report what it observes, until told otherwise. Results Subject D-63164 Female, 31, no discernible mental abnormalities, is placed in the chamber and instructed to wear SCP-178. Subject is not told of SCP-178's true nature. Subject does as instructed and immediately begins emitting expletives and walking backwards towards the chamber's wall, looking intently at something to its one o'clock. Research staff instructs subject to describe what it is seeing. Subject presses its back to chamber wall and describes seeing an entity standing halfway across the test chamber by the wall, looking at the wall. Research staff instructs subject to describe the entity in detail. Subject states the entity is bipedal, possesses two additional upper appendages ending in large conical protrusions, and a smooth head. Research staff instructs subject to provide additional details. Subject begins describing the entity, and then suddenly expresses distress, stating, Oh God, it's looking right at me. Subject collapses against test chamber wall, still staring in the same direction. Research staff inquires as to whether entity is exhibiting hostility or not. Subject states that it is not moving, but looking at it, 
Subject instructed to remove SCP-178. Subject refuses, stating that it does not trust the entity. Subject reminded that uncooperative behavior will result in termination. Subject removes SCP-178 and begins looking around the test chamber in distress, stating that it can no longer see the entity. Subject instructed to wear SCP-178. Subject complies and states that the entity is still looking at it. Subject instructed to report any changes in the entity's behavior. Two minutes and 37 seconds pass before subject states the entity is no longer looking at it. Subject states entity is looking at the wall again. Subject reports no further changes for 17 minutes and 55 seconds. Test ended. Notes. It seems strange that the thing the subject saw was so disinterested, given the way the item came into Foundation attention. We didn't pick anything up in any of the recording equipment either. I wonder if this entity is really there, or an illusion generated by the item. Experiment 178E3 Name Doctors Date Undisclosed Procedure D-Class subject is to be placed in secured test chamber containing SCP-178. The test chamber is to be observed via bulletproof glass window to adjacent control room and via audio and video recording devices. A fractal blue and red image is to be placed on one wall of the test chamber, and a plastic bin, containing ten standard tennis balls, is to be placed near the opposite wall. D-Class subject will be told SCP-178 is an experiment in next-generation 3D specs, and that staring at the fractal image while wearing SCP-178 will allow it to see animated three-dimensional images. D-Class subject will then be instructed to wear SCP-178 and report what it observes. In case the subject perceives any entities, it will be instructed to throw a tennis ball at them. Results D-51441 Male, 27, arson, murder, no discernible mental abnormalities, is instructed to stand at the end of the test chamber, opposite the fractal image, and wear SCP-178. Subject complies and expresses surprise and discomfort. Subject instructed to describe what it perceives. Subject states it perceives two entities standing in the room. One, from now on referred to as Entity 1, next to the fractal image, with its back to the subject, and the other, from now on referred to as Entity 2, crossing the room from left to right. Subject opines that the person who designed the animation is mentally unbalanced. Subject instructed to describe Entity 2's gait. Subject states it walks using both its legs and upper appendages. Subject equates Entity 2's gait to that of a gorilla if someone put its skeleton together wrong. Research staff inquires whether both entities are similar. Subject replies that, apart from size, they appear to be generally similar. Subject then proceeds to describe entities fitting the description of the entity in experiment number 178E2. Subject instructed to pick up one tennis ball and throw it at Entity 2. Subject complies. Both the research staff and the audio recording devices observe the ball moving uninterrupted until it hits the floor on the opposite side of the test chamber. Subject expresses surprise and distress, attempting to back away for 0.7 seconds before severe lacerations begin appearing on its body. Appearance of lacerations continues for 4.7 seconds until subject presumably expires from massive bleeding and trauma. Autopsy on expired subject reveals lacerations consistent with being slashed by three sharp objects, relatively thick and tapering to a point approximately 17 centimeters in length and 4 centimeters in maximum width. Analysis of ball thrown by subject discovers only trace amounts of human sweat, matching subject D51441. Notes Holy <laughs> It would appear that these things don't like being disturbed. On the other hand, that ball sailed through the air like nothing was there, and with the death of the subject, we cannot know if it indeed passed where the entity was or not. This is still far from conclusive but the pattern of laceration matches the findings at the item's recovery site, so at least we've established beyond any doubt that it is dangerous. It's interesting to note that, so far, the entities are pretty consistent in appearance, despite variance between test subjects. 
I wonder if any non-violent interaction between the subject and the entities is possible. Experiment 178E4 Name Doctors Date Undisclosed Procedure D-Class subject is to be placed in secured test chamber containing SCP-178. The test chamber is to be observed via bulletproof glass window to adjacent control room, via audio and video recording devices, via infrared cameras, electromagnetic radiation sensors, and motion detectors. A fractal blue and red image is to be placed on one wall of the test chamber. D-Class subject will be told SCP-178 is an experiment in next generation 3D specs and that staring at the fractal image while wearing SCP-178 will allow it to see animated three-dimensional images. D-Class subject will then be instructed to wear SCP-178 and report what it observes. In case the subject perceives any entities, it will be instructed to attempt to speak with them. Results D-84291 Female 19 No discernible mental abnormalities is instructed to stand near the wall opposite of the fractal image and wear SCP-178. Subject complies and immediately expresses revulsion. Subject instructed to attempt to speak to it. Subject appears confused as to why it would attempt to speak to an animated image. Research staff repeats instruction. Subject expresses irritation and says, Hello, weird thing. How are you today? In a bored manner. Lacerations begin appearing on subject's torso and abdomen 0.2 seconds after subject finishes speaking. Subject's right arm severed above the elbow after 2.4 seconds. Laceration and subject vocalization stops after 8.4 seconds, when subject presumably expires. Autopsy on expired subject reveals the same kind of lacerations, indicating sharp objects approximately 21 centimeters in length and 5 centimeters in width. Notes. I guess that means we can assume that any attempt to interact with the entities ends in hostility. And nothing on any of the sensors either. We're establishing a pattern here, but the main question is still whether the death of the subjects is caused by the item or by external entities. I wonder if subjects not wearing the item can be affected by it. Experiment 178E5 Name Doctors Date Undisclosed Procedure: Two D-Class subjects are to be placed in secured test chamber containing SCP-178. The test chamber is to be observed via bulletproof glass window to adjacent control room, via audio and video recording devices, via infrared cameras, electromagnetic radiation sensors, and motion detectors. Both subjects will have general knowledge of the properties of SCP-178. One subject, designated Subject 1, will be instructed to wear SCP-178 and will describe to the other subject, designated Subject 2, the location and appearance of any perceived entities in the test chamber. Subject 2 will then attempt to interact with the entities. Results Subject 1 D61955 Female 35 Three counts of murder GBH No discernible mental abnormality And Subject 2 D-57321 Female 27 No discernible mental abnormalities are placed in the test chamber. Subject 1 instructed to wear SCP-178. Subject 1 expresses dislike for the research staff. Subject 2 concurs. Research staff reminds both subjects that uncooperative behavior is grounds for termination. Subject 1 wears SCP-178 and begins emitting expletives. Subject 2 expresses distress and inquires as to the reason for Subject 1's consternation. Subject 1 states that, There's one right behind you. Subject 2 turns around and states that it cannot see anything unusual. Research staff calms both subjects by assuring them the perceived entities are harmless and instructs Subject 1 to assist Subject 2 in making contact with the entities. Subject 1 states that there is an entity about a foot in front of her and that the entity's head is about two feet taller than her. Subject 2 inquires whether the entity is looking at it. Subject 1 replies in the affirmative. Subject 2 attempts to calm itself and proceeds to look where it considers the entity's head to be and say, Um, hi there? Lacerations immediately begin appearing on Subject 2's torso and face 
for 0.9 seconds before Subject 2's neck is severed. Subject 1 vocalizes acute distress and runs toward the test chamber door. Subject 1 attempts to bludgeon the door open unsuccessfully for 5 seconds before turning around and saying, presumably to her perceived entity, No! Get away! Subject 1 begins suffering lacerations across the abdomen and torso. Movement, laceration, and vocalization cease simultaneously after 17.3 seconds. Autopsy on expired subjects revealed two different laceration patterns. The relatively few lacerations suffered by Subject 2 are consistent with lacerations caused by three sharp objects, approximately 27 centimeters in length and 8 centimeters in maximum width, while the many lacerations suffered by Subject 1 are consistent with lacerations caused by three sharp objects, approximately 14 centimeters in length and 3 centimeters in width. Note. We still don't know whether the entities are actually there or are illusions caused by SCP-178, but now we know they can affect more than the wearer. This means that this object is potentially much more dangerous than we initially surmised. Interestingly enough, the two subjects showed different laceration patterns, as though they were inflicted by different entities. A shame we didn't ask Subject 1 about the number of entities in the room. We'll do better next time. It is also possible that Subject wouldn't have been harmed if she hadn't addressed the entities herself. That's also worth checking out. Experiment 178E6 Name Doctors Date Undisclosed Procedure Two D-Class subjects are to be placed in secured test chamber containing SCP-178. The test chamber is to be observed via bulletproof glass window to adjacent control room, via audio and video recording devices, via infrared cameras, electromagnetic radiation sensors, and motion detectors. Both subjects will have general knowledge of the properties of SCP-178. One subject, designated Subject 1, will be instructed to wear SCP-178 and will describe to the other subject, designated Subject 2, the location and appearance of any perceived entities in the test chamber. Subject 2 will then attempt to interact with the entities. Subject 1 will be instructed not to speak or otherwise interact with entities at any eventuality. To ensure this, Subject 1 will be told that any attempt to make contact with the entities will result in termination. Results Subject 1 D83616 Male 44 no discernible mental abnormality. And Subject 2, D36176, male, 52, no discernible mental abnormalities, are placed in the test chamber. Subject 1 is instructed to wear SCP-178. Subject 1 uncooperative. Subject 1 instructed again to wear SCP-178. Subject 1 uncooperative. Subject 2 urges Subject 1 to cooperate for fear of punitive measures. Subject 1 wears SCP-178 and expresses surprise and disgust. Research staff inquires as to the number of entities. Subject 1 states, They're everywhere, Doc. There's nine of them here with us. Subject 1 then turns to look at the bulletproof glass window separating the test chamber from the control room and states, And there's three in there with you. Look, there's one leaning right over your data expunged. Notes. Following the loss of all research staff in Incident Number 17814 Alpha, the containment protocols have been revised. 057. Experiment 178E7. Name. Doctors. Date. Undisclosed. Procedure. D class subject is to be placed in secured test chamber containing SCP 178. The test chamber is to be divided into two partitions in a 5 to 1 ratio, with the smaller partition containing the chamber entrance separated by bulletproof glass, with a small hole in the middle covered in steel mesh to allow the passage of sound from one partition to the other. The test chamber will be observed remotely via audio and video recording devices, via infrared cameras, electromagnetic radiation sensors, and motion detectors. Subject is to be told of SCP-178's nature and instructed to wear SCP-178 and attempt to communicate with entities on the other side of the partition. Results Subject D-13627 Male 52 Rape 
double homicide, no discernible mental abnormalities, is placed in the test chamber and instructed to wear SCP-178. Subject expresses displeasure but complies. Subject instructed to describe what it perceives. Subject describes four entities in the other partition. Subject states entities look docile, two of them jabbing the walls, and the other two looking at it through the glass. Research staff inquires whether any entities are present in the subject's partition. Subject looks around and replies that none are present. Subject instructed to attempt to communicate with the entities. Subject expresses desire to get this over with. Subject says, presumably toward the perceived entities, Hello, can you hear me? Before recoiling suddenly. Research staff inquires as to the reason the subject recoiled. The subject replies that the entities have begun pounding the glass with their upper appendages. Research staff inquires whether they are succeeding in causing any visible damage to the partition. Subject replies that they are not. Audio recordings fail to pick up any sounds apart from those emitted by the subject. Research staff inquires whether the subject can hear the entities pounding on the partition. Subject appears perplexed and replies to the negative. No changes occur for 10 minutes and 14 seconds. Research staff announces the end of the experiment. Subject expresses relief and removes SCP-178, placing it on the floor. Test chamber door opens and two security personnel, Agents Data Expunge, demand that subject comes with them, presumably to D-class cells. Subject turns towards door and begins complying when lacerations begin appearing across his face, torso, and upper arms. Subject vocalizes distress, and both security personnel recoil and emit expletives. Agent radios a containment breach. Agent begins firing his weapon into the chamber, hitting and killing the subject after 2.1 seconds of being lacerated. Containment teams are mobilized to the testing area, and the sector goes into lockdown. Searches are concluded after an hour and four minutes, without any findings or further incidents, and lockdown is lifted. SCP-178 is found where Subject D-13627 dropped it. Note, that could have been catastrophic. First time we get to experiment on SCP-178 and the whole sector goes into lockdown. The brass aren't going to be pleased. I think we should come up with some lower risk experiments for the foreseeable future. I guess anywhere that attempts to establish contact with the entities can die even after removing SCP-178. It's interesting to note that Agent suffered no ill effect, despite firing at the entity. I estimate it is because he had only very limited knowledge about the entities observed by those who wear the item. Experiment 178E8 Name Doctor's Date Undisclosed Procedure D-Class subject is to be placed in secured test chamber containing SCP-178 and a video camera connected to monitor. The test chamber is to be observed remotely via audio and video recording devices, via infrared cameras, electromagnetic radiation sensors, and motion detectors. Subject is to be instructed to hold SCP-178 up to the camera and report what it sees on the monitor. The camera is both connected to the monitor and to an external recording device. Pending the success of the experiment, the research staff will submit a request to view the recording. Results Subject D-61286, female, 28, 15 counts of GBH, 2 counts of murder, no discernible mental abnormalities, is placed in the test chamber and instructed to pick up SCP-178 and hold it up to the camera. Subject complies and holds SCP-178 approximately 20 centimeters from the camera. Subject instructed to hold SCP-178 up to the camera so that it sees through it. Subject inquires as to which lens it should hold it to. Subject instructed to hold the red lens up to the camera. Subject complies. Research staff inquires whether the monitor displays anything unusual. Subject replies to the negative. Subject instructed to hold the blue lens up to the camera. Subject complies and reports that the monitor still does not display anything unusual. Subject instructed to put down the camera and wear SCP-178. Subject complies. Subject vocalizes acute distress, stumbling backwards while staring at the monitor. Research staff inquires as to the source of the subject's distress. Subject reports three entities crouched in front of the monitor, looking at it. 
Subject instructed to remove SCP-178. Test ended. Notes. It would appear that either the item functions similarly to ordinary stereoscopic glasses and requires two eyes, or that the effect isn't merely optic. There's a way to test that. Experiment 178E9. Name. Doctors. Date. Undisclosed. Procedure. D-Class subject is to be placed in secured test chamber containing SCP-178 and a special mount containing two small video cameras simulating a pair of human eyes connected to monitor that splices both images together in real time to create image, similar to the way stereoscopic sight works. The test chamber is to be observed remotely via audio and video recording devices, via infrared cameras, electromagnetic radiation sensors, and motion detectors. Subject is to be instructed to hold SCP-178 up to the camera and report what he sees on the monitor. The camera is set to record. Pending success, the research staff will submit a request to view the recording. Results Subject D87325, male, 32, no discernible mental abnormalities, is placed in the test chamber and instructed to pick up SCP-178 and hold it up to the two cameras. Subject complies and holds SCP-178 approximately 20 centimeters from the two cameras. Subject is instructed to view the monitor and describe what it sees. Subject complies and vocalizes distress, dropping SCP-178 and backing to the chamber wall. Research staff inquires to the source of subject's distress. Subject states, They're watching me. Subject is instructed to hold SCP-178 to the two cameras. Subject is uncooperative. Research staff threatens subject with termination unless it complies. Subject complies and holds SCP-178 to the two cameras. Subject is instructed to attempt to communicate with the entities. Subject says, Hello? in the opposite direction of the monitor, presumably in the direction of the entities. After 0.5 seconds, lacerations appear on subject on the torso, face, and right arm. Experiment is concluded, and SCP-178 is recovered. Autopsy on expired subject showed consistent lacerations, approximately 27 centimeters in length and 8 centimeters in maximum width. Analysis of the recorded footage shows three separate entities, with varying sizes, observing subject. When subject attempts communication with entities, two grow three sharp claws and lunge at subject. Notes. They look more hideous than we imagined. We're going to need to analyze the footage more and calculate the speeds of the entities before we do any more experiments. Item number SCP-183 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-183's container must be soundproofed and lined with heavy steel plate. Size of the container is unimportant as SCP-183 has no apparent preference and will use as much space as it is given. Personnel are strongly advised to avoid entering the container. This is pointless and exceedingly dangerous, and any desire to do so may be indicative of hitherto unobserved psychological capabilities of SCP-183's song. Openings in the container are to be small and brief, preferably exclusive to feeding purposes. The organism has shown no real desire to escape, but should this occur, it could quickly render the entire research environment impassable and potentially quite dangerous. SCP-183's song has been described as pleasant, and as long as no subliminal effects are observed, researchers are permitted to keep the chamber's embedded microphones active, if they wish. Description SCP-183 is an unknown biological entity that is, for all intents and purposes, invisible. Evidence of its existence comes mainly in the form of monofilament wires which the organism apparently synthesizes. These fibers are extremely thin and durable. They are capable of slicing through soft tissue, bone, and even body armor with very little force. Coupled with the difficulty of seeing them, this constitutes a serious hazard to all personnel within the container. Organic material left within the container disappears at a rate of approximately 4 kilograms per day, an indication that the organism is omnivorous. The wires synthesized by SCP-183 
are unique in human experience. Tests indicate that they may be a form of carbon nanotube. They appear frequently and almost instantly, strung taut between walls, ceiling, and floor in no apparent pattern, forming a convoluted, razor-sharp tangle. This may be analogous to a spider's web, a trap to capture food. Small animals in the chamber are left alone until killed by their own movement. If they are non-fatally injured by the wires, SCP-183 will consume any severed body parts, but will not attack the animal itself until it is dead. Individual fibers vanish after several hours. Our working theory is that they eventually lose their adhesive properties and fall to the floor to be consumed and recycled by SCP-183. Interestingly, SCP-183 plucks its wires in a distinctly musical pattern, producing a surprisingly complex and euphonic melody, which is reproducible on the common pentatonic scale. The limited number of notes suggests that the wires are produced at discrete lengths and tensions, possibly indicative of high intelligence. This may be designed to lure in prey. Attempts at playing back the tune or others in the same key have produced no observable changes in activity suggesting that it is not intended for communication. Current research on SCP-183 aims to reverse engineer the organism's monofilament wires and to ascertain the mechanism of its invisibility. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.